Then we are today with K. We say, keep his kindness. I don't know if there's an English word for kuster, kuster, um, kindle. No, it's not kindle. But it's like, this keep is not keeping, it's not keeping um, just like, I'm keeping it in the, in the garage. I'm keeping it in the, what's a close? A, a close. Uh, what is a close? What's good? Safe, a safe, yeah. A safe. No, no, I'm not just keeping it in the safe. This, 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 this keeping is acoustic. I'm putting it close to me. I'm putting it close to my heart. I'm putting his kindness close to me. I can say, keep close to your heart, his kindness. Are you with me? Are we with me? That's where we are today. Let's talk about this kindness. Kindness is not like this fake, um, fake friendliness, fake smile that people can give one another. A kindness is not a, a good manners. We have all of that, and you've seen that. We've seen that in our lives with this uh, sometimes a fake religious smile, or you're not, you cannot, you cannot face these guys again. And now you must be friendly to them. But now you, you, you've just seen that smile that's an extra centimeter further. You know it's fake. You know, because, hello, hello. Yes. Come on. So it's, kindness is not good manners. It's the character of God. It's the character of God. It's, there's depth in kindness. It's a thousand times more than good manners. Depth of who God is. Let's go for the first, first scripture. Or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? Do you think lightly? Do you despise some other translations? Afrikaans, verach jy, verach jy. His kindness. Do you understand his kindness? Think lightly, you take it as cheap. For people to be kind to you, you kind to people and think God is kind to you, it's just like one of those things. But how, what is the depth of kindness? What is it all about? The challenge is, in the context of verse 1, 2, 3, it's talking about judgment. How this one is judging that one, that one is judging that, though that guy. And says, basically, how do you have the right to judge somebody else? How do you have the right not to be kind? With people around you if God was kind to you if you had the kindness from God to be forgiven to be given grace to become a child of God who are you not to be kind with, uh, to others and to justify your I don't know if the other word is ugliness but to justify yourself not to be kind to other people kindness is not for the Otanis some nasty old tannies also I've seen. But <clears throat> kindness is about his character. The kindness want to lead you to repentance. But unfortunately with Israel and in our lives many times we don't understand the kindness of God. We don't appreciate the depth of that. Then God must use circumstances. Then Israel every time they, when it's going good, their heart is away from God, then they fall in a lot of rubbish. And God must send the Philistine, the Amorite, the, the, all those guys to take them away in slavery or to come against them so that they will cry out to him. And then he saves them from the situation. They come back to God. But that is through the circumstance. But God don't want you to repent because of circumstances that he must organize for you to cry out to him. He wants you to repent because of the quality of who he is. Because of the awesomeness of your God. That the kindness must bring you to repentance. His awesomeness must bring you to repent. Because you're in that situation. You feel, I'm always falling. I say, alright, I will make the quality decision not to do this again. I will not get angry. I will not use those words again. I will not say this again. I will not do that again. I will not look at that rubbish again. I will not judge again i will not become negative again i will not go and stress or walk in anxiety again and you make that decision the whole time and it does not work 
Because repentance is only going to work if you look at God, look at his kindness, look at his awesomeness. And the more you look at him, the easier the, ch- the decision going to be able to be to walk after him. But you look at your problem the whole time and you want to make the right choice at your problem. But you're looking at the problem. You're not looking at his kindness, not looking at the awesomeness of who he is. But when you look at him, you're looking at the answer, you're looking at the way, you're looking at the strategy, you're looking at the essence of life. Look at him. And then your repentance is because of his kindness, because of his grace. Kindness has to do with um, hospitality. In other words, you can write it down. Kindness has to do with hospitality. Kindness has to do with hospitality. Vriendelijkheid in Afrikaans. All translations had goedertierenheid. Toen was het iets gezegd. Goedertierenheid. Maar goedertierenheid is het te doen met vriendelijkheid, met gastvrijheid. So hospitality. What the other word that goes with kindness? The other word of the coin. When you hear kindness, you hear welcome. Welcome. It's the fact. God's kindness is God saying, you will always be welcome with me. God calling himself a father, as we're talking about Father's Day today, even. With a father, you're always welcome. Father will give discipline, yes. There where you are wrong, he will not there to condemn you. He will give you discipline if he believes you are a real son. Because true sons, he discipline. Illegitimate children, there is no discipline. Because you cannot do something right. But if he believes in you, and he believes that you can do it right, then there will be discipline. If there's a coach for that guy, and he's going to the Olympics, but the coach does not believe in that athlete, what the heck, just fire that coach. The biggest thing for the coach that you need is the one that believes in you. Hello? Hello? And that's why there's discipline, not because of a mistake, discipline because of potential. So there's a father that gives you discipline because he believes in you, he knows your potential for your life. No, I'm not under the law. Yes, you are in the law. You're supposed to be in discipline, understanding the discipline, not control. No, the enemy will control you. But God will bring you in a pattern for life, your father. Are you still here? But all of that I need to see is God being kind to me. No, Lord, I need your grace. You cannot, you must be now nice with me. If God is nice to you, if God is kind to you, he will give you discipline. So you can get out of the rubbish. Are you with me? He will use circumstance. God, be kind to us and then God will send them into exile so that they will realize it's not in myself. It's not me and me and me, what I can do. No, it's because God is kind to you. He wants you to have the right patterns in your life so that you don't destroy your life. Destroy your life. He will bring you to deny yourself so that you don't destroy yourself. Amen. You want to follow me? Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross. But religion will destroy you. If you're in performance, will destroy you. This is feeling guilty every time, and then you don't get it right. This, that, that is a destructive pattern. Destructive pattern. But denying myself is in worship, laying my life down because of I love him. That's denying. Denying yourself because I love him, because I worship him. Religion. I'm in trouble again. And then you're going to destroy yourself. Ah, you with me? But all in the context of Kindness of God that leads you to repentance. The, 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 the biggest reform of repentance you had in your life, the biggest miracle was when you gave your life to Christ. Why? Because you looked for the road past hell that you will miss the fire. And when you find a strategy, oh, the strategy to miss hell is to accept Jesus. Okay, let me accept Jesus. No, that's rubbish. It was the kindness of God. When you saw the kindness of God, you've heard the 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 cheap word, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, and you hear a lot of things in church and love you. But one day 
There was just this one day you were shaken at the love of God. Shaken that what kindness is this? That God will give his son to die on the cross for me for my mess up so that I can become a child of God and have an eternal excellent life with him. What kindness is that? And because you see God, because you saw his character, because you see the beauty of his love, that's why you gave your life to Christ. And then why did it change? Why did it become a thing of, I mustn't be in trouble. I must be out of trouble. I must do this thing right. I mustn't do this thing wrong. Why did that miracle not carry on? That miracle that saved you from hell into heaven was because you saw his kindness. You saw his character. So from there, to get in, into everything that is from God, get out of all the chachi, all the rubbish, all the rubbish. It's God's kindness, God's goodness that must lead me into the best for my life. You will have time with the word. You will have time in prayer. You will come together when we come together. You will worship from your heart. You will put your focus on him when we worship through music and song. Why? Because you're captivated by his kindness captivated by who he is then you don't have a religious life to be out of trouble in no trouble out of trouble in trouble but you can have a quality life where life is knowing christ and paul says life is christ dies gain the death of my flesh tomorrow is gain because there's, then there's more of god amen so don't take it cheap the richness of his kindness everybody say it's not cheap is the riches of his kindness it's not just some other good manners next one or are you so blind as to there's no trifle that you eat as a pudding okay with and presume upon and despise and underestimate the wealth of his kindness and forbearance and long-suffering patience Whoa, man, that's in the Amplified, the same verse. But do you see what I'm, what I'm saying? Can you see? Blind. That you despise, underestimate. You underestimate the wealth, the wealth of his kindness. That's something that God must open up for you. That's something that God must open up for you. It will not just come. Because you know, it's free. It's free, but it's not cheap. It's free, but you must go and find it. It will not be given to you on a platter like that. Your Highness. No, no, no. There's only one that is your Highness. Are you with me? It's free, but it's not cheap. So have a cheap lifestyle with God. Taking his kindness in a cheap way. Taking his forgiveness in a cheap way. Or let it have this awesome value that you will keep it, you will treasure it close to you. The kindness of God. And don't take it lightly. Don't underestimate it. Don't despise it. But have respect for it. Because the opposite of that. If I don't despise, if I don't underestimate the wealth of his kindness, I will come into the place, first of all, to be thankful, to be grateful, to stand in awe, to come with contentment. Hello? And from that place, I walk in humility, and God lifts me up into this quality life where I can see the depth of his kindness, depth and meaning in tomorrow, where tomorrow can make sense if I know the beauty of his heart, the beauty of his kindness. Jy is nog hier? Okay, next one, let's go. Are you unmindful? That's a beautiful word for stupid. Unmindful or actually ignorant? Ignorant. What's the other word for ignorant? Duh. What back with you? Are you ignorant? I don't know what. Ignorant of the fact that God's kindness is intended. What's the purpose? To lead you to, the, to repent, to change your mind and inner man to accept God's will. To accept God's will 
It's not like I, there's pe many people in court. They slaughtered this man, they slaughtered that, or they stole this, or they were corrupt. They accept the will. And the will is you're going to sit in jail for 20 years. But they didn't change their mind about what they've done. Are you with me? So it's not about accepting God's will. But to change your mind and inner man to accept his will. Satan also accepts his will. When you say to that demon, go in the name of Jesus. He accepts the will of Jesus Christ. And the will is, you will go. When the demons came to him and said, please, don't send us out of the region. Send us into the pigs. They accepted the will of Jesus. But there it wasn't the changing of the inner man. <laughs> are you with me? Because there are demons. Don't walk like a demon that you accept God's will and you can do it, but you so moan and a groan and you are muff and you are this and you can do all the right stuff that you are expected to do, you know, and you don't want to be in trouble and you'll do what was expected of you and you're not stealing, you're not, you're doing everything at the workplace where you work, but you are muff. You don't understand the kindness of God. So that you can change your mind and the inner man. You need to think what God is thinking. Because you have the mind of Christ in your spirit. So my mind needs to be changed to think what God is thinking. Because his thinking is in my spirit. God's thinking, God's way of thinking is in your spirit because you have the mind of Christ in your spirit. But your own mind can make a a lot of rubbish, stupid decisions. So this needs to come in line. Amen. Everybody do this. Change. Next time your husband or wife or somebody make a, say something, say, change. Oh, you're going to be covered. <laughs> No, but you know what I'm saying. Right, next one. I've loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with my loving kindness. The first one says with kindness. Because of his kindness, you turn, you turn, you turn. Repentance means turn around. You turn, you turn away from the hamors and from what you think is nice. Because of his kindness. And now this one, he's not, not just turned around, but you are drawn into where he is. You're following him because you must. Rubbish. You're following him because you are drawn into the place where he is. The beauty of his kindness towards you. Kindness, welcome. Kindness, welcome. Prodigal son, you are welcome because your God is kind. Not because God is just saying, ah, oh, it doesn't matter what you've done. No. But because God is kind. Because God is God and God will not change who he is. His kindness is there for you. You're welcome. You're going to have some discipline. You can, can have the fattened calf and you can have the feast. But what happened there? At that place, there was this prodigal son. In the beginning, it was like Abba. What's that? Give me, give me, give me, you know? So that's <laughs> the prodigal son. He said, give me my portion, give me my portion, give me my portion. And then he messed it up. So you can have your life with Christ and your prayer is give me, give me, give me. And you can go and mess it up. And one day in the eye of a pig, you realize, <sighs> when you desire the food of the pig, then you realize, Ish, I might need to go back. And this time, not give me, but make me. Now to his father, he says, make me like a servant. I come in humility. I stand not for what is mine. I stand not for my human right of my whatever you want to call it. I say, make me a servant. And when he humbled himself, God lifted him up. Your father will lift you up because there was a kindness in the father. Your father is kind till the day. doesn't matter the, the greatness of your mess up. He cannot be more than the greatness of his sacrifice on the cross. When people say, how can I forgive myself? I say to them, if you have no respect for the blood of Christ, don't forgive yourself. I cannot forgive that other guy. Okay? If you have no respect for the blood of Christ, 
don't forgive the other guy because you must honor what he has done more than what you will honor the cross you will respect more what that guy did to you than what you will respect what christ did for you but if you honor and respect what christ did for you more you will forgive him and you will forgive yourself you are still here Ah, oh, come on, man. Therefore, I've drawn you with loving kindness. Kindness, my hospitality. I've drawn you with my hospitality. I've drawn you with my welcome. Because if I'm your father, I'm saying you are welcome with me. You are permanently, permanently welcome with one that is called father. Two sides of one coin. Next one. Love your enemies and be kind to do good. That is also for your enemies. So the guys that you don't want to be kind to. Why? God will put some people in your life that you would rather call them your enemy. You know, this is one guy. The wife said to him, the Bible says you need to love me. And the husband said, yes. The Bible says I must love my enemies. <laughs> That's not a good answer. <laughs> but so for you. <laughs> love your enemies and be kind and do good. Because in the rest of that scripture, he's talking about the kindness that must bring them to the Lord. How must they know that there's a life that they can have with God? If it's not somebody that will be kind to them. If that guy thinks and believes he's a mess up, he's not kind to himself. Many people out there, a lot of them, and some of you guys even, you're not kind to yourself. I'm not talking about compromising. I'm not talking about selfishness. But there's a kindness that you must actually have towards yourself. Hello? Focus. Kindness towards yourself. Because if you know how to be kind to yourself, you will know how to be kind to others. But if you cannot be kind to yourself, you cannot be kind to others. It's like, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because love is patient. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is kind. So learn that principle. But you cannot be kind to yourself if you don't know what is kindness. Look at God and find out in him what is kindness. And then the way that he is with you, be like that with yourself. So you need to be kind to yourself. Don't put some religion on you. Don't put some justification. Don't put some deception on you and how you justify certain things in what you're doing. You do a comedy in hell, man. Devil sit back and eating his popcorn, looking at you. You are the comedy. If you can fool around like that and justify yourself, he can relax. He doesn't have to do a job in you. You will destroy yourself. <laughs> no, by God's grace. By God's grace. Let's find out what is his kindness now all about for me to turn, for me to be drawn into the place where he is. Amen. And from that place that I know I can give this to others because I take it for my life. Don't put the law on you. But jump into the word and you will see the kindness that you can have with yourself. Right, next one. Let your kindness be known to all men. Everybody say all. Now say it with more irritation. All. Yeah, because that's what your flesh is saying. Your flesh does not like all. You can be kind, you know, with certain people. But if you must be kind with all men, Oh, men, why, why, why? The Lord is at hand. In the beginning, I thought, what the heck does this mean? But then I realized it's, it has to do with he's there. He's there with you. This is the very oldish English. But it is, Afrikaans is, die Heere is nabij. The Lord is with you. Why can you be kind? Because the Lord is with you. Because the kindness of heaven is with you. Therefore, you can be kind to others. You can always be kind to people because the kindness of heaven is always with you. His name is God. So if God's love is always with you and you are driven by his love, 
you are driven by kindness also because you are must be driven by his love 2 Corinthians 5 be compelled by his love ons is gedrijf ons is gedring deur sy liefde sê die skrif so the driving force is not this anger i am fed up i'm fed up with this i'm going to say i'm going to give you a piece of my mind oh what a rotten mind Get over your mind. Change your mind. The word said. Okay? And if you want to give him a piece of your mind, it's a piece of kindness. Everybody? Give me the fake smile. <laughs> okay. Princess. Okay. Right. Kindness be known to all men. Why? Because God is with you. But you know, you cannot be friendly with him if bitterness is with you. When your bitterness is with you, or your miserableness, or your, or your mythheit, or your negativity, or your anxiety, they can see that anxiety is with you, or anxiety is at hand. Anxiety is with you. Or they will see that God is with you. Oh, why can you be so content? Why can you just be so okay with everything? No, it's not like you don't take responsibility, but because the one that takes responsibility for heaven and earth, he's with you. And you know that. But you will do what he says. But he is with you. Amen. Next one. The Holy Spirit and the bride, the church and the true Christians say, come and let him who is listening say, come. Is that the whole one? Okay, great. What are we saying with that? If the Holy Spirit and the bride, the church must say, come. What is the word come? That's what we're talking about. Kindness and welcome is in the same word. Come, take for free the water of life. How can you do that? Through your life, through how you relate to people. They must know, I can come to the Father. I'm welcome with God, man. I'm welcome with Him. I'm welcome in His presence. I will be welcome with him i can come to him he's not there to condemn me but sit with the issue you will and you decide who's welcome with you and who's not welcome who's welcome and who's not welcome who's welcome who's not welcome then you cannot understand how you can be welcome with god but if you understand how you are welcome with him your life will say with the spirit your life and the spirit of god will say come come you're welcome. Bloemfontein, you're welcome. The school where you are, you are welcome. The kids, your friends, you are welcome with God. You can do what you, what you want and you're welcome. No, 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 no. When you come, you will come, come under his authority and he will change things in your life. But you can always come. You're always welcome. you with me. Right. May you say that with the Holy Spirit. Because if the Holy Spirit and you are not going to say, Come to the father then you and some other demon spirit will say come to what to the temptation come to the lust come to bitterness come to arrogance come to religion come but your life will say come with some other spirit let it be the spirit of god because if it's not with the spirit of god and the spirit of god is only faithful to the word so if, the, if you say what the word is saying, the Holy Spirit will with you say, come. But if you say something else, whatever other spirit, it is my, his language, that demon will come. And you and that demon will tell people to go somewhere, more into just business, more into a focus with money, more into stress, more into just finding financial security. Instead of finding God as the security, and wherever he guide, he will provide. Not super spiritual. I'm just saying, that's the principle. Next one. Right. The Lord will command. Everybody say command. command. His loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. Now, students, it doesn't mean right in the middle of the night, you start to sing. We will kindly remove you. <laughs> okay. What am I saying? The loving kindness. He will command his loving kindness. What does it mean? His loving kindness is compelled. His loving kindness is 
is locked up to be there for you. God said, I will reveal my character. My character will be known to you. You will see my loving kindness. Are you still here? Are you still here? It will be like a song in the night, a prayer to the God of my life. Next one. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Who knows the old song? There's not a lot of all the generation here. Your, is, it, is it in English? Loving kindness is better than life. Your love. Afrikaans says, I goeder dier nee, oortreft die lewe. That's also old song. Don't look at me like a cow for a new gate. <laughs> Yo, man. Okay, but you understand what I'm saying? Better than your life. Better than your challenges. Better than your success. Better than uh, all the riches and all the provision and all the whatever you can have. Better than your opinion. Better than your hurt. Better than your hardened heart. Never again in, in Jesus. Name. Better than your very clever way of thinking. Better than all of that is His loving kindness. Whatever you can think of trying to be, whatever you can live today, far more better than all of that, all of that is the welcome in the heart of the Father for you. Are you still here? All right, we're going for a landing. Next one. Love is patient, love is kind. That's not enemy, that's not both. There's a few Sundays that we did about 1 Corinthians 13. All these principles of 1 Corinthians 13, the one is building upon the other one. So you cannot be kind if you are not first patient. You must first be patient, then you can be kind. Otherwise, kindness is just some other fake smile, some other good manners. But there's a depth. Remember we talked about the depth in kindness. The depth and the quality of kindness, it starts with love, where love is patient. And patience is not, I will take it with you, I will take it with you, I will take it un until the day you are fed up. No, 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 patience is the ability to be excited with someone that normally irritates you. How do you like that one? To be excited with someone who would normally irritate you. <laughs> okay, we almost grow in Jesus' name. Just turn around and let's go for it. <laughs> Why will you be able to be excited with somebody who irritates you? Because God is excited about him. Because God has a plan for that man's life. Because God died for him and gave everything for him. So you're excited. You put your emotion with God's emotion. You put your emotion with God's emotion. If you want to be free. But if you must be a subject to whatever that person is doing to you and submit and bow before that guy what he is doing to you, then, okay, be irritated, be frustrated, have an issue with him. That's okay. Then bow before he's whatever he's doing to you. But there's only one before. To him you will look and before him you will bow. And for what he has done to you and for you and then want to do with you for, for eternity. Jesus Christ. Amen. I still not here. Love is patient. And if you understand the patience of God, then you can be kind. Built on the patience of God, kindness. You are welcome. Why? Because God is patient with you. You are, that guy is welcome with you because you are patient with him. say, Good. Next one. Are we finished? Jonah. Therefore I fled previously. Therefore I fled to Tarshish. For I know that you are gracious and a merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness. One who relents from doing harm. Well, what is this one? Jonah 1. It wasn't just Jonah. He was selfish and, and oh, disobedient to God. How did he get into the place that even if when God said, get ready, and go to Nineveh, tell them the following. 
that he will just say, I will not. Wow. How did he get into the place of saying, I will not? Because what? For I know. Because I know. I must go and tell them that they, they are finished. God's going to send the fire. He's finished with you. But God knew. He knew that if they repent, if, they, if they're going to say sorry, everything that I said is not going to happen. Because I know God's going to show kindness most probably. You know, what if they repent? You know, there's some people you, you don't want to show their kindness. You don't want to face them because what if then it's, everything is then fine and God forgives and I must forgive him and he must forgive me. And then we mustn't have this close relationship necessary, but <sighs> come to know the heart of the Father. Come to know God so that you don't, that you put your heart with God's heart. But this man, he doesn't like this loving kindness of God. I'm going to go. And then at one place, God will organize that your ship is shaken by the storm. The only problem is other people's lives are also then shaken because of your disobedience. But at the end, have the guts to be honest and say, throw me overboard. Wow, Jonah, there's not selfishness now. Throw me overboard. Okay, and then in the fish, not disobedient self-justification in Jonah, but suddenly humility and repentance. God, you are the one who delivered me. But, but just go and read your Bible. He didn't say, God, I will save you if you deliver me. Please come and deliver me. He said, you have delivered me while he was still in the fish. Go and read your Bible. It was not... That prayer looks like a prayer that you must pray after you got out of the fish. But he prayed it in the fish of how excellent God is and, and who he is and his mercy and his everything. He had a revelation of who God is, but he, he didn't want to put it on the ground there in his life. You can have all the things in here, my brother. You must walk it out. Okay, but what happened? And in the end of the day, he said, God, forgive me. And then circumstances, you out, <laughs> out of the fish there on this uh, seashore. So that there you will say, God, I will go whatever you ask of me. And he went and he did the will of God. You know, but afterwards, chapter 4, he still want to go with the word, not with the character of God. There he's miserable. And God comes and says, why are you angry? As if God doesn't know why. God knows exactly. He's not, he's not like God is confused asking Jonah the question. But God is asking, why are you angry? Why are you so frustrated now? You know, God is setting him up. And Jonah said, because I knew if they're going to repent, you're going to forgive them. I knew it. That's why in the first place I didn't want to go. Amen. <laughs> and then... God's organizing, not the devil, God's organizing that the sun is burning on you. And then, oh, he's organizing a nice tree and a nice shade. And then the devil, sent the destroyer, the thief, comes in the form of a worm and eat up the whole tree. No, 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 no. God sent the worm. Mm, not the devil. There's some worms sometimes in our lives <clears throat> that are sent so that we can come into the place of gratefulness, into the place of thankfulness, into the place of realizing God, is, if it's not for your kindness. So God organized the worm, and then God come again and say, Jonah, <laughs> why are you so angry? <laughs> and God organized that he will get angry. And uh, <laughs> why are you angry? What are you angry about? You know? <laughs> and then he's saying, I was kind to you, giving you that tree. Why are you angry that, with me if I'm kind to them? Are you still here? Oh man, there's some Nineveh's that God will send you to. There's some situation, there's some school, there's some varsity, there's some city, there's some nation, there's some... In the job you do, you, you enter that hospital, you enter that place, you enter that businesses. And you are there because the devil wants you there or because God wants you there. You can only believe one of the two. 
But if you don't realize God has sent you there, then okay, let the devil and religion use you and all the spirit of selfishness that you are there in the name of selfishness just to organize your own deal for your own thing, for whatever you want to do. But if you know that God has sent you there, then you and God are in that situation because we are talking about the good works God has prepared for you for you to go and do the good works. So if you do the good works in that place, okay, Lord, I, I trust you for this deal to be settled. Is there anything else you want me also to do today? Anything else? Are you with me? Because you're in partnership with God. Amen. Because his kindness must come forth through your life. So you will be in a place and then you must ask God, what, what, what now? So I was one time um, with a conference in America and I'm coming back and I'm going on the airplane and I said, God, something that we're going to do on the airplane. And while still going into the airplane, God said to me, I will speak to that guy that's standing there. Okay. Went to him, spoke to him, and said, now who you are? Who are, who, who you, are? Who are you? <laughs> now, like, tell me who you are. That was afterwards. <laughs> no, he's a pastor's kid. And I sense a lot of things. And he's one of the leaders of a big network. And there's five apostolic leaders, and he's one of the, 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 the children. And I just said, just let, let me tell you what I, what I experienced. I told him what I, what I feel and what, what is happening in his life. And he just, the guy type of cracked up, but then we had to go in. And in the airplane, oh, now I must go and speak to him. But uh, you know you must stand up in the airplane, especially when, when you're very small. And you go and you go to the place and say, you, can you come out now? We were all in the airplane flying, man. Come on. I want to speak to you, the strange guy. So we sat there on that itsy teeny weeny chairs from the flight attendants. Yeah. You know, when, they, when, you fly, when you go up, they, they think that things that were afkom, never tell us who upset. Ah, whatever. But in any case, so we sat there, we had a conversation, it was amazing. It was amazing. And he told me, no, God and my, my dad, they can do something, me not. I'm a soldier and I'm going to become a mercenary. Uh, you pay me, I kill. How hurt the type of hurt that man went through in his life. And he can justify a lot of things. But he, according to him, saw no kindness of God. And in what he's going to do, he will show no kindness. You give me the money, there's no kindness. And all I'm saying, leave the story there now, for now. But all I'm saying is, my brother, my sister, wherever God takes you, he wants to show his kindness through you to somebody. Because that day, I hope, I trust, I believe, he had to see God's kindness, how supernaturally with a man from South Africa that he doesn't know from anywhere, would come to him and say a lot of things of what is the heart of the father for his life. But I can just go and sit in the airplane and just go on. But you and God are supposed to do life together. But if you and God are going to do life together, you'll have to show some kindness. Are you still here? Is that the last one? The last one. The last one. Don't necessarily believe them, but I think they want me to stop now. But, uh, okay. <laughs> so, when finishing off, I'm just saying, yeah, my brother, my sister, come to know the Father, please. But if you want to come to know the Father, you need to come to know His kindness. You know, you need to understand how kind He was, how kind He was, that He took the time to make sure that somebody would explain to you the gospel. It's rather a thing of God, please show your kindness to such a lot of Muslim nations. Show your kindness to the Palestinians. Show your kindness to the Jews. Show your kindness to Ukraine and these, uh, some of the Russian guys. Show your kindness to some guys that are really going through hell. Please, Lord. But most of the time, you will let the ball come back to us. Say, so you are supposed to be ambassadors of my kindness. We are called as an ambassadors of Christ.
ambassadors of his kindness, the lights of the world. Bring the light of his kindness. Bring the salt of his kindness so that the meat will not rot because the, the salt is in there. The Bloemfontein will not be a rotten, stinking chamorse because the salt is there to preserve, to bring, to make sure that it's not a lot of rotten meat. So even with government, let's trust God that something major, major, major will come from, from it in this season. For the first time, how, how long that the big, long meeting was ended in prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, was ended in prayer. Doesn't matter what, what political party you voted for, but you better stand for Jesus Christ. Are you with me? So let's trust that God, that God's going to do, show kindness to people that you felt in the political arena that you felt, that guy, he's a this and he's a this. And this they're all corrupt and they're all called that. Who, who gave you the right to judge? You know, there's some corrupted way of thinking in all of us that we need to be de dealt with. That we need to get out. Who are you to point the finger? If you have respect for his kindness, if you know the depth of his kindness, you will not point the finger. You will be grateful and you will pray God's mercy on them. As he was merciful to you, please God be merciful to them. Are you with me? So let's, let's keep our lives in that place so that we can, our life can have purpose. Your thoughts can have purpose. Your prayer can be purposeful so that your life has a purpose. There's meaning in that what you do. And with that satisfaction, God will surprise you. Thank you, Father, for your kindness. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Forgive us that only many times when circumstances are bad, then we run to you, Lord. Then we are uh, intense with prayer and your word when we want answers and we want this. Forgive us for that, Lord. But God, we want to be intense with your word and appreciate prayer and appreciate relationship with you because of who you are. Not for the changing of circumstances, but because of who you are. God, help us to see more of you. Open it up as we open your word. Every man, woman in this place, that even in this circumstance, they will come into the place of seeing who you are. Your loving kindness, drawing us, drawing us to you as a father. Thank you, God, that no one sitting here will sit with the condemnation of whatever they did wrong. But in spite of the mess up, they will know, I welcome with my father. I welcome him for my father. He's calling himself father because he wants me to come to him. Please, Lord, I pray that every man, woman, in what area in their lives, they will come back into the place where you and you alone will have the center, the center, the center place of honor in our lives. Set us free. Set us free for that purpose. So we pray in Jesus' name. And all say... Amen. Amen.